I must have done a great job in my previous presentation. Okay, let's get started. I'm Stepan, core developer at Gradle. I live in Krakow, Poland, and I also committed Mokito. Um, so, migrating and upgrading with Gradle. So that's going to be our agenda for today. So uh, first, I'm going to throw some best practices at you. Then I'm going to be doing some demos uh, where I create heterogeneous, heterogeneous, that's the way to put uh, projects that have uh, a multi-project Gradle build that one of the project is built by me or by Ant. So I'm going to show you the capabilities of Gradle to adopt to some third-party stuff, to legacy Maven builds, legacy Ant builds, and this, those will be the mm, ways of solving certain problems uh, when you are migrating. Um, I'm also going to mention upgrading Gradle, which is uh, which is important once you already migrated to uh, Gradle from your uh, other tool, from your legacy tool, possibly. Uh, it would be good to know uh, how to upgrade easily. So I'm going to show you some, some of the things that we have available in Gradle. So let's start. Um, first, you need to have a good, you, uh, you, you need to have a positive decision that you want to migrate. Everyone wants to migrate to Gradle, right? Or you're looking for ammunition right, to throw at your boss. And he says, no, Gradle, come on. Um, but, um, so an interesting is the Hibernate story. They've uh, migrated to Gradle a long time ago, but it's a very good read. And uh, it's caused a lot of churn in the community. It was very interesting. Uh, people had various views. Yet the Hibernate team has moved to uh, Gradle. So uh, take a read and you can pass on that information. And by now, there are probably lots of other resources on the web you know, why various people have moved to Gradle, so you can find it. Some of the testimonials are also on our web page. I like the LinkedIn use case, not sure if it's up already. Uh, but those, the Hibernate story is nice, it's uh, objective, at least it's not influenced by us. Uh, so, a good read. Um, one of the things you should also do is prepare the team, so trainings, you know, by Gradle or training, yeah. Uh, so uh, trainings and various preparations, so all the same things to do when you are changing the build tool. Uh, you've got to do that. Uh, so it can't be an operation that someone does over the weekend and on Monday developers are using a completely different tool and uh, basically uh, saying those nice words about Gradle. Um, so um, like a basic thing when you are migrating is um, comparison of the outputs. So basically, you're comparing the output of the old build with the output of the new build. You're going to have some false positives, but it's like a basic way of validating whether the migration proceeds in the, correctly. Um, there is a plugin to compare various Gradle builds. Uh, I'll show that later. Um, definitely use the wrapper. I say that at every my session, so maybe I'll skip it. Use the wrapper. That's one of the migration best practices. It'll make it easy for like rolling out an upgrade of Gradle in all your projects because the Buildmaster tries new Gradle version, bumps it in the wrapper, checks in this new version to the source control. All developers that then uh, clone the repo and update, they suddenly use this, not suddenly, they, in controlled way, they are starting you to use a newer version of Gradle. So, mm, safe migration. So, um, if you have an old tool that mm, builds your application, uh, the canonical way of doing safe uh, migration is to do it slowly, incrementally, and side by side, which means that you keep the old build doing its things, and then you are checking in the build or gradle files on the side. That's how our clients have done that and have great success in. Um, this is very soft because you can let those builds be together for a certain period of time unless you pull the switch and you remove the old stuff and everybody's happy. Yeah. So that's one way of doing that. And uh, this side-by-side -side migration is possible because Gradle can be adopted to virtually any kind of uh, structure of your project. So let's say if you wanted to migrate your old and build to Maven, it would, it's probably going to be unavoidable that you're going to have to restructure your project, right? 
If only for the reason that Maven, Maven has a strict rule that you know one artifact per project, right? If your project generates multiple artifacts, which you know in end world that was normal, then boom. In Maven, you would have to not only when your yeah, migration to Maven would cause trouble because you would have to restructure your build and restructure existing build. Gradle, on the other hand, is flexible; would adopt to whatever structure you have, and hence side by side migration is possible. Also, you can plan it, you can um, iteratively approach it. For example, first step, uh, you uh, replicate the build outputs, then you replicate the tests, then you replicate uh, some other validation rules, and then you know, that, that will be the iterative approach. At the end of that, uh, you would have a ready Gradle build. Um, that's my rule for safe migration. Um, some of the, so let's do some demos on migrating from Maven. Anyone, by the way, migrated already from Maven? No, because you are here to find out how to migrate. Yeah. So who is, who is on Maven? Okay. Who is on Ant? Oh, most of you. Who is on something else, something more exotic? Excellent. You like to party, all right. So uh, let's use the build setup plugin to automatically convert from Maven. Ah, that's the way to go. So I have some demos. Let's go to Maven conversion. So I do have a very small Maven project. It has a okay. It has a traditional paradigm in Gradle in Maven that you have a parent poem. So you have this, uh, and then you have also composition of modules. No, I'm not. I don't remember. The names are no longer in my head. It's like a, it's composition and parent poem inheritance, both of those ways. It's the Maven way, basically. Um, and it actually works, so if I do Maven clean install, things should just work, or should just build. Um, to describe a little bit the structure, here's the re reactor summary. We have the webinar parent application, which is a parent poem. We have the APIs implementation and the web app. And this is really working. So for example, if I go to the web app, and I type maven jetty run, I think it is. So I'm kicking off a um, jetty maven plugin, and it started something on port 8080. Let's check this out. Localhost 8080, let's see what we have. There you go, we have a small web application, a uh, small multi-project Gradle build, Maven build, soon to be Gradle. Now what I'm going to do, let's kill that jetty. Uh, I'm using Gradle version 1.7 that I built from source a couple of days ago, which means I have some nice features that are not available in 1.6. One of, the, of those nice features is the build setup plugin. Uh, which I think should be documented in the release notes. Where are the release notes? There you go. Uh, build setup, improved build setup plugin. So a uh, couple of things about the build setup plugin. Um, you, you can learn about it. And build setup plugin is a way, it's, it's gonna come with Gradle 1.7. It is useful to set up a new Gradle build. So and currently, this build setup plugin will support only two kinds of builds. It will either create a brand new, uh, very small demo Java project, or it will, if it detects the Maven structure, then it will try attempt to convert that Maven build into the Gradle build. So let's just do it. So I'm gonna go to the root for, to the parent directory, and then. So we don't we don't have any Gradle files right now. Yeah, it's only POM XML and only the sub modules. So I'm doing Gradle tasks to show you that the build setup is available. There you go. Build setup built. Gradle setup built. Gradle should detect that. Uh, uh, it also mentions that mm, Gradle Maven to Gradle conversion is an incubating feature, so it's not yet there but it might be useful for, for migration. But uh, I guess you can try it out on migrating a migrating large Maven project, you know, but there might be some glitches. And for this demo project, obviously, it'll work beautifully. Okay, so let's see what we have now. 
Uh, we have now build.gradle. We have a wrapper, gradle.w. We have settings.gradle. Let's take a look at the settings.gradle file. So we have uh, project root project as a name. We are including some sub projects. We configure the project dir, but we don't really need that stuff because it's well. Let's let's actually leave it as it was. So that's how it was generated. And I can do Gradle build now, and you can see that we have a full blown Gradle build. So the webinar is built, the impl build, and the APIs are built too. And to prove that it's really working, let's add the Jetty plugin to the webinar war. So by default, Jetty plugin is not applied in the generated mm, war application, but we can add it. And if I do Gradle Jetty run, then our application should work. Let's see. There you go. So it's the same thing. It says the same thing, but. Uh, there you go. We have migrated uh, this Maven project. We have generated the Gradle build, and it seems to be working fine. The results of running applications are the same, and uh, and we have the same features as Maven has, right? So let me let me prove it to you. So for example, let's close that. And more importantly, both of the builds, old one and the new one, are can be used side by side, right? So I've, the, the Maven files are still there. So if I go to webinar implementation, to the source folder, there's the webinar Java, and I'm going to say I'm very happy today. I'm going to change that string. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Maven. Uh, Maven. I need to install everything. That's, that's the Maven way for solving problems. Okay, I need to first install everything. Then I'm going to go to the web, to the war application. Then I'm going to do Maven, Jerry, run. And we should see, when I refresh that, that the string has changed. Um, because the web application is using this webinar class that I have been changing. Yes, it says very happy today. And we have exactly the same feature with Gradle. So let's kill the jetty. Let's change it to I'm very happy since yesterday. And let's do Gradle jetty run. And that should rebuild the webinar impl. Yes, as we can see, the webinar impl has compiled the Java code. And, and we can do this. There you go. I'm very happy since yesterday. It actually worked better than in Maven world because in Maven I needed to do the install operation on the, on the whole project or on the implementation. But uh, Gradle is smarter. Gradle knows the dependencies. Gradle knows that Word depends on impl. And an impl has changed because I've changed the class, so it needs to be compiled and jarred. So that would be, the, um, I guess, the simplest case, the, the build setup plugin that converts from Maven. At some point, we might have other conversion mechanisms. So for example, we might uh, make the build so, uh, setup plugin to understand end and parse the build XML files and try to replicate the Maven build according to them. Uh, or for example, build setup plugin could consume the uh, IDE settings, the .class path file of Eclipse or IntelliJ metadata and try to create the build script files, or it can, or other, uh, or can read other models. So we'll see. Right now, we are focusing on migrating from Maven, uh, but maybe there might be other uh, usages as well. Any questions you might have? Yeah, sure. So the plugins with the properties that the build set of plugin doesn't understand, it just eliminates that? For example, if there's a profile tag, or if there's a custom plugin that's available in the Palmat XML that the plugin doesn't understand? Probably. Okay. Probably it, it's going to ignore that. It's because it can't replicate that. Correct. Yeah, so it's. Uh, is, is it, or is it going error out saying I can't migrate because I no. don't understand this particular plugin or this XML? Most plugin? likely not. Because what, what's happening is that the way build setup works is that it builds the Maven model and then 
reads this model but selectively read the information it understands in order to spit out the gradle belts. So basically, it's, it does not like read everything. It's reading the important bits, the dependencies, maybe some of the plugins. Uh, it reads the information. I think it reads the fact that use, they're using test and G, so it detects the test and G plugin, and if that's the case, it's going to configure the test task accordingly. So there's uh, there is some smartness there, uh, but it's not like groundbreaking. It's not going to solve all the problems. I don't think it supports the custom Maven plugins. Uh, by the way, this is. Uh, Initially, it was uh, implemented by Baruch Sadogurski from, the, from our community, and basically we ported his uh, code. Uh, it was a, a GitHub project that allowed you to generate Gradle from Maven, and we've ported that. Hence, it's really, that's another reason why it's incubating, because we haven't fully like, cleaned this up yet. We wanted to provide you something usable, but we haven't yet spent like huge amount of time to make sure that you know, it's solving all the various use cases, and uh, possibly, and hence, I guess for the mid-size, big-size Maven project that has you know various interesting nitty use cases, this might not work that well. But I mean, even though if it's only useful for generating the POM XMS with the dependencies section, it's kind of useful because you don't want to manually copy over those dependencies. Yeah. So let me show you an example. So the uh, not that one. Let's see the build of the Gradle in the root project. Yeah, it, it's only you. I haven't added a lot of dependencies, right? It's using Mojito and JUnit because the POM XML, the parent POM XML probably uses them, right? Yes, so it specifies JUnit and Mojito. So uh, it's. It's, uh, for example, one interesting use of that is that you have a huge dependencies section in your Maven and you don't want to manually copy them over to build the Gradle files. Kick off the build setup plugin, let's see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, at, if, if, maybe the build the Gradle files, the resulting build the Gradle files will not like uh, build from scratch this project because it's kind of the project is complicated, but at least you're gonna have some base that you can you can tweak. So, so you might be useful. Uh, what is the equivalence code for provider? Um, in because in the, in the Java plugin, it's not there, but if I apply the work plugin, there is a provided compile scope. We would have to check. I think, as far as I remember, there was something there in the Maven conversion that understood it. Well, there's only one way to find out, I guess. Let's see. So I'm going to remove all the Gradle stuff. And remove the settings of the Gradle and remove the. You need to remove everything because otherwise the set, build setup plugin will ignore that stuff and will not run. Because by default, the build setup plugin does not replace existing. So, webinar war build the Gradle. Okay, so I removed all the Gradle stuff. Let's add some provided dependencies, yeah? Let's add it in the webinar var application. POM XML. Let's add some dependency to uh, provide its code. Actually, let's make it easier. And just, no. Let's add another one. Let's go for org collection, org Google collect collections. And let's go for guava version 12, and then scope provided. It's a lot of writing, so I hope Gradle that you shine, showing that you really solved that. Okay, and let's run the build setup. This is all, hang on, let me just do Maven clean install, just in case. I'm gonna make sure that the model is correct and it's actually building things. Oh, build failure, I see. Google collections, or Google. Ah, it's not collections, obviously, it's Google Guava. Guava. Let's install Maven. Come on, Maven, be nice. Build failure still. Mm, could not find a fix. Oh, yeah. 
It's calm the world wide. It's my last session, yeah, I'm gonna collapse after that. Mm. But you can bring me mojito and just I'm gonna take a sniff and I'm all good. And okay, it succeeded. So let's assume that this dependency is neatly resolved. Uh, okay, let's try to convert. Build setup. Woo! Set up build, thank you. Come on. You spent more time on that than me, I guess. <laughs> hey, something like and then now let's try. So let's see whether the webinar webinar war has nice provided dependency. Ha ha ha! There you go, provided compiled. How smart is that? But that's because you put it in a war, not a jar. Yes. So I mean, uh, if I put it in the jar, I would say that it will be ignored. That will be, or maybe, yeah, let's 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 not try that unless you want me. No, let's not try that. It might not be that nice, but uh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's go back. Um, so we see the build setup plugin, but now let's. Uh, this is a concept from incremental migration. Let's say that one of your sub projects uses some really exotic Maven plugin that, that is a real black box, but it does its thing. Nobody wants to redo this code. And you really need that project to be Maven project. And you really need that plugin to be used. So what we are going to do is we are going to have a Gradle build whose one sub project is a Maven, Maven project. And this way I want to show you the flexibility of Gradle of consuming other builds and wrapping them and basically bringing them into the Gradle world with all the benefits of Gradle, with making this, uh, this uh, build, this wrapped build, an incremental and other things. So it's going to be quite interesting. Hopefully I'm, I'll manage. We'll see. And I'm going to call it shallow import. Um, so I'm making a distinction be between a shallow import and deep import. And I don't like the vocabulary here, but I, you know, I made it up. So shallow import is that we are exiting out to a separate process to do this, to wrap this external build, right? And deep import is that we are pulling in, we understand the model of this external build. It's made and we understand this model, we are pulling it that in uh, and basically it's deep because we deeply understand this model. We are, for example, we can pull in the clean, the install phases from Maven and make them uh, first class citizens of uh, Gradle. So deep import is not possible at this moment with, with Maven. It's possible with Ant, and I'll show you that later. Um, but Hans' vision around uh, wrapping existing build is that you have a Maven build and you, uh, and you type Gradle build, and Gradle just builds it. Because Gradle understands Maven model, it can pull all that model and that information, translate it to Gradle, Gradle and execute. So that's, that's, the, that's the end goal. And I'm not sure when it's going to happen and if it's going to happen, but that would, that would be, it depends how, how many of those migration cases we have. Because it seems like these days, people are not really interested in like migrating, but you know, they, they, they just want to bite the bullet. We know we want to use Gradle, let's just use Gradle. And, uh, and I'm not sure if like solving those various migration cases, deep Maven import, actually uh, is better than other interesting features we can add, like parallel building, you know, uh, uh, some of the performance improvements, more tweaks to the dependency resolution. So it depends how our priorities goes. But at some point, we might have a d deep import of uh, Maven. We already have machinery for that. So Gradle already understands Maven model. We use Maven 3 classes to uh, parse those poems and, 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 and read the model. So we already have machinery to read the model. So I guess it's the matter of writing some code that takes advantage of that model and does something useful with it. Let's go back to shallow import. OK, so I'm going to go to webinar import project. Um, let's go to build.gradle. And we want it to be executed in Maven. So let's make sure it's still buildable with Maven. 
if I do Maven package, it should do something. And it should work. Okay, cool. So Webinar Impulse is our black box sub project that must be, run, must be executed in Maven. Um, let's go to the top level build of the Gradle file. Because right now what is happening is applying Maven plugin to all projects, which is good. And it's applying to all sub projects the Java plugin, which is not quite what we want. Because we want, we want that stuff to be only for a specific project. So um, I'm going to do something like that. Project Webinar API. And project uh, webinar war. And I'm going to configure those two guys. Yeah, something like that. So um, I'm no longer including the webinar impl in that common configuration block. I don't want to because that's our black box made and built. So now things will stop working, okay? So if I go gr webinar impl, if I do gradle build, it's not gonna fly. We don't apply, we don't even have the, made the mm, ooh, uh, yes, so things are not working. So the there's no such thing like compile configuration. We don't, we no longer apply Java plugin here. Uh, okay, so let's make gradle execute maven. So I'm going to create a task that calls out to Maven and builds this Maven project. So I'm going to call it Maven build. Uh, it's going to be of type exec. And you can easily Google for the uh, Gradle exec task if you want to find out. There you go, some examples. Uh, it's the task you want to use if you want to exec out and fork out a separate process. So maven build command line is going to be maven clean install or package actually. That's what we need. Um, let's see what it, whether it works. Gradle maven build. Let's see whether it works. Uh, it seems to be building maven. Okay, first thing I don't like is just too wordy. Too much stuff is going on here. Let's reduce the level of output. Unless questions maybe some? No? Okay, cool. So reduce the level of output. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do do first. Let me show you how, whoa, where's my Chrome? Let me show you how to find information about how to reduce the logging. So a Gradle capture output, how to capture the output. Logging, and we should see some example, I think. Yes, for example, here's an example, capture standard output and you decide to what level, uh, to what logging level. So let's go back to here. So we're gonna do, it's logging captures the level. Let's encapsulate and reuse again. There you go. Logging, capture standard output, at log level info. Let's run it again. Yeah, it seems to be working. So we are capturing the input, the output. If I run this build with minus i, now we see that output. So we see that Gradle has some nice uh, features. If you are wrapping existing builds, you can control logging so that it's not too noisy. Uh, but if we are running with lifecycle, which is a default uh, Gradle logging level, uh, you don't see what's going on. Therefore, I'm adding some log statements here. So do first, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna do uh, a logger life cycle, uh, kicking off Maven build, and then let's include the command line. Something like that. And then let's have a do last. Maven build completed. 
Now when I run Gradle Maven build, we're gonna see those two messages kicking off Maven build, and then Maven build completed. So we've added some logging so that we understand what's going on. And life cycle, as I mentioned, this is the default logging level. Uh, it's, it's a non-standard logging level. The other logging levels are very standard, like info, debug, warm, those kind of things. Okay. Um, now, my problem with that task, I'm going to do it already. So I want to make this task incremental. If I don't make it incremental, it's, uh, you know, it's not going to be friendly. It's, I'm going to be wasting time and you know, I have a limited time for the demo. Let's make it incremental already. So, okay. So we need to, in order to make something incremental, we have to define in Gradle what are its um, inputs and outputs, okay? So um, the output is probably target director and webinar input 1.0 snapshot jar. That's the thing. So let's declare that. Okay, let's do it at the top because that's kind of interesting. In outputs, outputs, uh, file. And we can do target. Since this is taken from the project name, let's make it nice. Project name, project version, uh, dot jar. That's the output. Um, that's not, it, it will make our build incremental, but. Uh, it's not going to work correctly because we haven't declared the inputs yet. But let me show you that it's going to work. So it's considered now up to date because the jar exists. If I remove target webinar snapshot jar and rerun the build, you're going to see that it's running it. Okay. So the inputs inputs are the Java code, Java classes. Let's configure that. Inputs uh, there and director is going to be source sets. Actually, it's going to be files. Source sets main Java. Is that it? Yeah, let me just let me just jump really quickly to the documentation on the source sets. Gradle source sets. There you go. Source sets main java, java source I think output is what we need no hang on because maven compiles that so we really need a directory where the java source is found so java is a source directory set and has method uh, source this okay mm. Or I'm going to make it simpler. Source main Java. This is where our class uh, classes leave for that. I think. I'm not sure why I was looking in source. It does not make sense because we don't apply Java plugin here. This is not a Java Gradle project. It's a it's this wrapped Maven project. So our inputs are the Java classes here. Let's see whether this actually work. Gradle Maven build. Um, it's failed because uh, line four. Yeah. Uh, somewhere here. Okay. Let's do a proper ID stuff. Uh, it's built it real. It's there. Uh, this should work. Outputs file. Target, project name, project version, job. Like that, you think that's the problem? No such property outputs. Yeah, that was that, thank you very much. Ah, it's not easily visible when there's no line break. All right, cool, there was no line break between dear and output, I think that was, that was the case. Okay, it has completed. Now if I run it, it should be up to date. Now let's change something in the Java class. SLC main Java. And then I'm happy. Let's just say I'm happy. 
Cradle Maven build. It's no longer up to date. Maven build is invoked. If I run it again, it should be up to date. So now you can see how Gradle could adopt a third party builds and can wrap them. Not only it wraps them, but also can, uh, you can, on top of that, you can add some of the neat Gradle features like the incremental build, which is pretty cool. And we have clients that uh, using that method, shallow import, they have just exec out all the build inf uh, to Maven in builds infrastructure and wrap them with Gradle and that worked for them. So. Now, that's not all, because our end goal is that our web application works correctly. And I don't think that's the case now. So if I do Gradle build, like build everything, it's supposed to be working, but I'm, I believe that if I do jetty run, so or let's run this jetty application, let's go to webinar war, build.gradle, let's add the jetty plugin. Let's run it. Okay. Let's go back to the browser. Let's see how it goes. Yay! No class def found error. So we can build this one single Maven uh, project using Gradle, but we haven't yet properly hooked it up to our multi-project build. So let's do that now. So let's go to build a Gradle of the war application. Um, so it has a compiled dependency on the project web webinar impl. Uh, so let's go to the project webinar impl. I'm going to describe you how this project dependency actually works. Okay? So edit webinar impl build a grail. Um, I need to declare an artifact using Gradle terminology and Gradle API so that other projects that depend on this webinar implementation project can actually understand it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like that. Uh, I'm going to create, uh, let's do artifacts. And um, declaring artifacts in Gradle require me to specify a configuration to which this artifact is hooked into. Uh, so let's add a configuration to that. Let's to call it archives, which follows the naming scheme of Gradle. And our archives will be, uh, and now we need to declare this artifact. So let's take a look in the user guide how to do so. So uh, Gradle declare, declaring artifacts. And then let's browse down a little bit and have some nice examples. Okay, this is an interesting example. I think that's, that's, the, that's the API we're going to use. There are a few ways of configuring artifacts, but I like this one with the map notation. So artifacts, archives, we specify the file, some of the other interesting metadata about this artifact, and uh, the task who builds this artifact. So it's going to be file and I want to duplicate the file specified here, so let's, uh, let's call output jar. Let's create a local variable uh, output jar file. Okay, so we have a file output jar. We declare it as output of this Maven build, and we declare it here. And we also want to declare who builds this artifact so that projects that depend on that project, uh, so that the dependency resolution, if, if someone uh, uh, requires this artifact, Gradle understands what tasks need to be executed so that it's being built. So built by, built by, maybe built. Okay. And I think that because you could have multiple tasks in here that build different things, so this way it knows which task to. Do. If I don't specify that, 
um, what's gonna happen is things will not work correctly because great we cannot assume that you know run every task here to build something yeah, I mean, yeah. so basically people like other projects consumer would depend who depend on that project would depend on that output jar but this output jar would not be created which means things wouldn't work correctly um, actually, I can demo that. So I'm going to comment out this build by for a second. I need to go back to the to this project. This is the webinar war that consumes the webinar impulse. I need to slightly change how I depend on the project because the artifact that gets published by webinar impulse is published within the archives configuration. So what I need to do is I need to specify that. Um, previously, I didn't have this configuration thingy. Um, there is also a configuration called default in Gradle. And depending on that project, Webinar Impulse, um, it assumes that there is a default configuration and that, that the configuration name that will be used. But I, I, feel, I, I feel slightly safer if I don't use this default configuration because it's kind of hidden and I prefer if we explicitly depend on archives configuration. Maybe I'll demo uh, in a second. I'll demo the, uh, the default configuration so that you can see the difference. But for now, what we have is I have commented out the build by Maven build. I want to show you one more thing. So I'm going to do Gradle webinar war build. So I'm building it with minus M. Minus M means dry run. Just show me what tasks are being executed. Um, so we should see that there's something not right with the sequence of tasks that to be executed. Uh, as you can see, we, we only built war, which is incorrect, because war depends on impulse project, which means that the impulse project should be built too. And here, this build by kicks in. If I enable that and Gradle understands who builds this artifact and then I do Gradle war build then Gradle whoa 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 what's going on webinar test okay mm -hmm. this looks good to me let's do something else then. Gradle webinar pull. Maybe build. Uh, actually, let's run with. Let's run with the stack trace. Let's see what I cannot convert maven build to a task. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it can be converted to task. Not sure why. Maven build is a task. Uh, maybe it requires the task type. Uh, let's take a look if this works. Okay, cool, it worked. Now, uh, the difference between the previous execution is that webinar war, prior to compiling Java, uh, the Gradle inferred that there is a dependency to impl and Maven build has been built. Make sense? This build by. Build by allows Gradle to infer task dependencies, and hence uh, the impl Maven build has been invoked. Okay? Um, and then let's shortly discuss this default configuration thingy. So there's a default configuration. So I, what I could do is I could add a default configuration. And that's how I do it. But normally I don't do that, right? So I, I think I can do something like that. The reason I need to put it in the quotes is because this is a resource word in Java. So that, that wouldn't work. So it needs to be in quotes. That's another thing I kind of don't like it. And do it, doing it that way means that I can, in the consumer project, I don't have to specify the configuration. Yeah. Now, this kind of should work. We'll see. But I never know with those quotes. Oh, yeah, it, it worked. Cool. So, so just remember that this is this thingy called default configuration. And by convention, if you, are, if you are specifying a project dependency in your dependencies, it hooks into the default configuration. And if, the, uh, if this webinar impulse project was a Java project, 
uh, applying Java plugin, and Java plugin hooks up to the default configuration, the runtime configuration, and the archives. So this is just to make everything working, kind of advanced stuff. Uh, but I, I kind of don't like it. I prefer archives. So we're going to have archives. Uh, OK, a few other things we're going to do. Uh, so we don't have, I don't think the clean works correctly. So if I do, if I go, if I do Gradle cleaning, yeah, and then I do Gradle Maven build, it's still up to date, right? It, which is not correct because I've done clean, so clean should clean that up. So let's let's add the clean properly. So um, in the webinar impl, I'm going to do task clean type delete. And then what I'm going to do here is clean, oh, sorry, it's delete target. Okay. Now if I do Gradle clean build, clean Maven build, you can see that uh, we should have, oh, is there a proof that it already exists? Why? Let's go to the webinar impl. So apparently clean already exists for webinar impl. Let's take a look in the let's take a look to the root project. Maybe it adds some interesting stuff. So only adds Maven plugin. I, s I guess that Maven plugin adds the base plugin. Yeah. Base plugin, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So Maven plugin applies behind the hood base plugin. And in Gradle, there's, there's a plugin called Base. Let's apply it directly so that it's cleaner. Uh, if I go here, this is our webinar impl. I'm going to apply Base plugin. I would do it anyway, because Base plugin adds some really basic conventions on top of your project, like uh, that there is a clean task, that there is uh, an archives configuration, those really basic things. And if I go now to the webinar impl, and run Gradle tasks. Ah, it's going to fail because I can't add the clean task. Okay, so we already have clean task added by a by the um, base plugin. So let's just configure existing clean task. That's all we need to do. Clean is a task that already exists. We only configure it to all, to delete target when it runs. This should not work. But in meantime, I'm I'm going to run Gradle tasks to show you that we have like, for example, assemble. Assemble is another task that is added by the base plugin. Because if you don't apply any plugins in Gradle, you basically don't have any, you cannot run any tasks. That's not essentially true because you can still run like Gradle projects, show me the project structure and other implicit tasks. But just keep in mind that uh, clean and assemble has been added by the mm, base plugin. And I'm pretty sure that it also adds Archives configuration, and I can get rid of that. Which means that when I do this, it should still work. Yeah. And I can do Gradle clean Maven. Actually, I can do just clean that Gradle. I, should, I can just do Gradle clean build. Oh, but assemble is there, right? I think it's going to assemble the artifact. Yes. So by default, you can see that assemble actually calls out to the Maven build. Because base plugin introduces this assemble task, and this assemble task by default builds all the artifacts. So it's uh, another smartness by Gradle and figuring out things. So you have this assemble task that, that will build all your artifacts. And because we have declared the artifact in this declarative way, Gradle knows that when you run assemble, Assemble task looks. Okay, I need to assemble all artifacts. What are my artifacts? Oh, there is an artifact. Oh, it's built by Maven Build. So I'm going to invoke Maven Build and I'm going to you know, build all those things. So there you go, artifacts. Any questions you might have? So if I apply the war or the jar plugin, I would have build instead of assemble? Or you would have both. both assemble and build. Okay, so did it, did, would there be any difference in invoking these two? No. Well, yeah, it's build runs check. Thank you very much, Spencer. Let's switch positions later. Um, so, uh, yes, build also runs checks and tests. Assemble only just builds them. Okay. Thank you. 
Bond, can you add our, can you say archives name and build? I don't think it infers like you can like a from task or something to get the outputs from the task. I don't follow. So maybe builds a task. Yes. You put the task instead of the file colon output jar built by maybe build. You just said archives maybe build. Yeah, build. that's. Is it? Yes, I think an adult's gonna work. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Ah, yeah, cool. Now let's see. Let's do clean assemble, and let's see what the ooh. No, it's had to. Yeah, so it's only inferred for some things. Yeah. Uh, we were thinking that Gradle can infer things from this Maven build because Gradle, what could do is, oh, this is a Maven build, so probably uh, we are building the outputs of this task, right? So this, since we have declared the outputs of this task, Gradle could infer that this is the job we are building, but it doesn't. I think, I think it's because you can have multiple outputs, you know, from like multiple, or maybe your output can be a directory, and you know it's. But there, there's something into it, yeah. Um, I guess the, the, the important message uh, from me for you is that Gradle is really declarative. And the more you declare using the standard ways, the more Gradle will be able to infer, and your build will be more easier to maintain, because you wouldn't add any hard-coded dependencies. Gradle would just figure that out, that, that out for you. Uh, OK, so we have something like that. Let's go back and do Gradle uh, webinar war build. Okay, it worked. Uh, it's a Maven build is up to date, but things seems to be working now. If I do Jetty run, what do you reckon? Will it work? Let's see. So previously we have an error that no class def found error webinar. Let's kick it off again. Oh, so it's a different class now. No class def found error demo. So if we drill down why it's failing, it's because our webinar class that is pro produced by the Impl project implements demo. Yeah? And demo interface comes from the webinar API project. So we are spicing up this example. And the webinar Impl, which is this black box Maven build, needs to consume the artifact of a Gradle build because the API is a Gradle, it's a Gradle sub project. So you have a, this uh, the interesting case for like a heterogeneous project where uh, you have a dependencies between your multi-project build between, between sub projects and one of them is, uh, is a Maven build. It consumes a Gradle sub project but it's also consumed by other Gradle sub projects. So let's make that happen. Um, okay. So standard ways for ex what what is the standard way to exchange artifacts in Maven world? Maven local, yeah. So that's how Maven works, right? So it's uh, well, not quite true because there's a reactor. But in general, if in your Maven build, if one project needs another, yeah, the, the first one should be installed to the local repository first. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to go to webinar impl build.gradle and let's actually prove that this is not really working. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do gradle clean maven build. It's working, but it really shouldn't because it's only working by coincidence that I already have the API project installed to the local repository. Uh, because in order to compile webinar impl, we need the API project. So let's remove the API project from the local repository and I'll show you that the Maven build will fail now. So remove Maven2 repository. Is it, com is it org gradle webinar? Yay, API, there you go. So I'm gonna remove the API from local repo. Now I'm going to do gradle clean Maven build, and I expect this to fail. Uh, we won't see much, uh, but it's failing. Let's run with minus i, because I'm piping Maven output into the, main, into the info level. So command Maven failed. Let's see what's the failure. Uh, failed to execute goal, blah, blah, blah. 
Oh, okay, so uh, the POM for Webinar API is missing. Mm, kind of a, yeah. So uh, Maven build didn't work for this, for our black box sub project because Web Webinar API is not available. Um, let's fix that problem. Um, it's not going to be beautiful, but it shows you that this is possible. So I'm going to do depends on webinar API install. Now we depend on install of the webinar API. Okay, now that should work, I think. Uh, I d let's run with the light. So build is successful. I'm going to run with without minus i so that we can see. So as you can see that Maven build depends on the webinar API. So the webinar API has been executed first. Webinar API jar install. So we sort of solved this problem. Um, let's. But that's not, not, that's not all, all that we need to solve. For example, another problem that we have right now is that our task is incorrectly incremental. So for example, if I run it again, because we have another input for this task that we haven't yet declared. So Maven build is up, it claims to be up to date. However, if I change something in this API project, And let's say I'm going to do string to, well, actually, let's do get the st description too. So I've completely changed the API. Now, if, when I do Gradle build, it's still up to date, which is incorrect. Maven build should, uh, so the webinar API was compiled, which is correct, but the Maven build does not, is not picking up the latest job. So let's fix that. And Mm, it's not that that definitely is not going to be beautiful. So we're going to have inputs. Uh, I guess it will be file, and then somewhere here, the file that is in the cache webinar API snapshot jar. There you go, this thingy. I could fix the path so that it's not so duplicated, but for the sake of example, it will do. So I declared that the input is this file installed to the local repository. And now if I do Gradle build, it runs. And it's a failure. I think that this time we should have a compilation failure because I have changed the interface. Now what's happening, it, it should find the POM, it should resolve the dependency, yes. So compilation error, webinar is not abstract, it does not uh, implement the proper interface. So let's go back. Let's go change it back to get description and do Gradle Maven build. It's working and it should be also correctly incremental. To prove that, I guess what I can do, I'm going to add string to string. This will not fail compilation because obviously in Java every object has a two string method, but at least you're going to see that that it's, it's executing it, right? So it's, uh, it's detecting whether it's up to date or not. Now if I run it, it should be considered up to date. So now we have it hooked up nicely. No, I wouldn't call it nicely, but in some way. And hopefully it kind of shows you that uh, we can, we can neatly hook that up together. And uh, the last thing is if I go to Webinar War and do Gradle J run, what do you think? Will it work now? Will it work? You don't know. No, it's not going to work. Uh, we have the same error. So the problem now is that uh, our webinar implementation does not really declare this dependency to webinar API uh, in its outputs. So, mm, so this project declares that, okay, we have this output jar uh, in my archives uh, configuration, but the dependency information does not travel. So we, would, we need to 
Um, there are a few ways of fixing that. One way of fixing that would be going to the war project and specifying this, conf this dependency here, runtime project webinar API. I think that will that will make it pass. So when Jetty runs and we go to the application, yes, I'm going to do this. Yay, it's working. However, I don't like it that much because this is a, the fact that Webinar Impl depends on Webinar API is an implementation detail of Webinar Impl. We should not be polluting the consumer with this kind of information. So this information should travel with the archives configuration of the webinar info. So let's fix that. So I'm, I th I'm taking that back. And what I need to do is configurations. Hang on, let me think what I need to do is I need to, OK? Um, I'm going to add a compile configuration here. I'm going to add dependency compile to project webinar API because that's the reality. In order to compile webinar impl, I really need I really need the webinar API first, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something like that. Archives extends from compile. This way uh, the archives configuration also includes the, uh, the compiled configuration, which means the webinar API, which means that if I go, if I rerun Jetty, actually let's do Gradle dependencies here, so that you can see that. So we will print all the dependencies of the webinar war project. Oh. Project will be found. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. You didn't tell me that first. You wanted me to fail. Thank you, my friend. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, let's take a look at the runtime. Because that was one that's interesting. You can see that the web project depends on Impel and Impl depends on Webinar API. So now it's nice, everything is nicely glued together. Is it like black magic, what I'm showing? Kind of? Kind of. <laughs> but Gradle is so easy tool. Yeah, um, yeah so, um, yeah. so now if I do Gradle J run. Hello, black magic, please work nicely. And then if I go here, the webinar says, I'm happy. Let's prove that this is really working and not some canned results. So I'm going to go to webinar, impl, C main Java webinar, let's change it. I'm very happy, let's say. And then let's do jelly run. So everything will be rebuilt correctly. Jetty will kick off. Maven build does its thing. Jetty has been started. I'm very happy. There you go. Um, so what do we have now? We have a multi-project Gradle build, whose one sub-project is a great is, is a Maven build, and it's it has a dependency to to the uh, Gradle project within that multi-project. Oh God, I would I would love to have a flip chart and kind of sketch it out. Uh, but um, this shows the power of Gradle of wrapping existing builds and basically making them first class citizens of the Gradle ecosystem. Incremental builds, uh, hooking up dependencies to configurations, those kind of things. Do you have any questions for that? No. So easy stuff. Is this part of the example? Uh, come again? Is this part of the, you know, the, the lab examples as well? Uh, do you want it? Ooh, probably not. I mean, I can, I can prepare it as a part of the lab examples and no problems. So I did a webinar a few months ago, which uh, and I'm doing similar things. And the content of that with solutions and with um, sort of base that I start is pretty much the same. 
I do the same exercise with and, but I'm, I think I'm going to save you from that. <laughs> it's getting late, it's Friday. Come on, let us go! Is, is it easier to do with an and when compared to Maven? In because and it will be something, well, depends if we're talking about the shallow import or, uh, or yeah. deep import. If we're talking about shallow import, it's the same. Because like, uh, at the end of the day, shallow import is pretty much wrapping, executing out, you know, forking out to build whatever is being built. So we could fork out to end, we can fork out to make, yeah. Okay, let's take a, let's take a break and look at the slides. Um, I promise I'll finish, I'll, I'll, I'm wrapping up soon. <laughs> okay, so um, migrating incrementally from end. Um, in end, we have this uh, deep import capability, which means that uh, I have some uh, end build, and I can say, hey, bring that end build into Gradle, and all the end tasks become first class citizens of Gradle, will become Gradle tasks. I'll demo that, but I'm gonna skip like difficult stuff as it's getting late, mm, but uh, let's take a look here. So let's close that. I had so many demos for you today, but I'm not going to be cruel. So, um, heterogeneous with ant. Uh, so, I have a similar case, right? But one of my sub-projects will be an ant build. Well, uh, there's no such thing like project projects. I want to see all the Gradle projects. Okay, API Impl War. Let's go to webinar Impl Edit and let's ls here. As you can see, we have build XML file, so I can do and. Let's take a look to this build XML. Build jar. There's a build jar method, and build jar. Oh, it's failing. Oh. Hang on. Uh, I think it's failing because I supposed to fix that example. Okay. Um, edit build. Let's take a look at the build XML. So we are jarring things. I'm just looking what we need here. Clean compile, compile class path. Oh, I see. So compile class path contains the webinar API. So um, I, in my example, in my demo, this end build consumes the uh, library that is built by Gradle by webinar API. So to work, to fix that problem really quickly, what I can do. I can first go here and do Gradle build. But all that can be built is build, or maybe not. I love to have really well prepared examples for my demos. There's no Gradle build. Uh, webinar API, we have webinar war, configuration archives. Okay, that's not correct. Because, because it's not correct. Come on, show me build successful. There you go. So the webinar API job has been built. Therefore, when I go back to my end build, I should be able to run end command. Hey, build successful. So, uh, where's the build target? Yeah. So, I mean, if I finish this demo and you know showed you all the tricks, this would nicely work because I could I would declare all the task dependencies and you know, everything would be working beautifully. But right now, let's just focus on this deep um, import and let's let's show it really quickly. Uh, so let's say we want to invoke those uh, end builds from Gradle. So I don't remember how to do so. So let's just ask user Gradle import and. There you go. So we have a uh, and import build. That's my friend. Let's see how what's what's going on now. So if I do Gradle tasks now, and and 
import actually worked, yes, we have built jar task directly to be used in Gradle. Let's see whether it actually works. Gradle built jar. Well, kind of jar, kind of worked. So, yeah, done. You know, works done. Uh, the the import the migration completed. So um, this is how you uh, importing uh, Gradle. Gradle can import main, uh, end stuff and basically make those end tasks first class citizens of, uh, of Gradle. It also understands the dependencies of tasks. So in the build XML, we probably have some dependencies, right? There is a compile classes, depends on clean build jar. Oh, but it can't be incremental. I think that's funny because build jar depends on compile classes and compile classes always make the cl makes the clean. How to solve that? So I need I want to make it incremental, but it's always building and rebuilding because it's doing the clean. So what I can do is edit build or gradle. At this point, all the tasks from end has been imported. So we have this clean task. For example, we can disable it. Clean enabled false. Now, after those tasks have been imported to Gradle, those are real Gradle tasks, which means you can use all the API of Gradle to configure those tasks. For example, you can disable it. This means that the clean does not run, but I'm not sure if we, oh, we, we should see that, that I'm gonna run Gradle build jar, but clean should be skipped. There we go. Um, so, and then I could add some code to make it incremental. So uh, the tasks that have been imported by build, so for, for example, the G we have compile classes and clean, right? So we could do compile classes, inputs, uh, directory, src, main, Java. We will configure the outputs as well. Compile classes have inputs and has outputs. Outputs, it will be, I guess, files. Oh, maybe directory, right, yeah, target. Okay, let's take a look where ls target. Classes, so it's dear target classes. There you go, so now what I'm gonna do is Gradle compile classes. It worked, let's run it again, let's see if it's incremental. There you go, it's incremental. So it's, it's very cool. We've imported the ant tasks and we were able to tweak them in the Gradle world to make them incremental. Pretty cool. Are you impressed? A little bit? Yeah. Um, so, don't get like overly excited about this deep end import because in the real life I haven't noticed like clients like uh, using that extensively when migrating from end because like if you want to migrate from end you 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 know you craft this those build .gradle files to take take full advantage of Gradle and not like re you know reach out to to ants to do stuff. Um, the, end, the deep end import might be useful if your code depends on some exotic end, uh, custom end tasks, for example, or custom end libraries, which are black boxes, which you have, you have to use, then maybe that'll be useful. Um, but on the other hand, in Gradle, and, and is the first, first class citizen of, of Gradle space, anyhow. You can, at any point, you can access uh, uh, ant tasks. Let me, I'm gonna show you a really dummy example, okay? So I'm gonna create task, hello world with ant. And here what I'm gonna do is do last, and there's a, what's the debug statement in ant? Echo, thank you. And it has a message. Uh, in, you would say XML and then attribute message, right? That would be hello from end. Thank you. Wow, the train is going here. Okay, and then we do gradle hello word from end. 
Go. With it. Hello world with it. Hello world with with it. Okay, cool. That should work. So as you can see, there's an echo. So you have access to any kind of end task. You could uh, stand in standard ways. You could uh, hook up whatever end stuff you need on class path. You know the custom tasks need to declare the the class path so that Ant can find those custom tasks and basically invoke them directly from Ant from Gradle. Just remember that it is much better if Ant invocations are within the do last. So don't overdo the Ant invocations at the configuration phase. That's one of the things that will make your build slower. Uh, but with that, this, this is a really dummy example, but there are some interesting Ant tasks that you know, Gradle does not provide uh, out of the box. So for example, in Ant there is a checksum uh, task that uh, calculates the checksum of a file. And gra in Gradle there is no convenience method for, for, gen for, for getting the checksum. Uh, so you could easily do do it with and so let's take a look and check some example yeah that's fine check some file to generate check some four okay mm, I hope it's printing it just so we're gonna do check some check some file yeah let's do target it's there well and then let's just do touch foo txt and let's do check so gradle checksum I don't remember whether I'll print this checksum or not so it's probably property uh, check the checksum um, so property, then I think that's this is where it's going to store. Okay, so after running this com this end command, the checksum should be the property that can contain. So I can do print. I can do Gradle stuff like log life cycle um, the checksum. Since this is a property in end, I need to refer it via the end. I think that's going to work. Session. Um, could not find property. The checksum. The checksum. The checksum. Don't do it for me. I don't think I need that. Maybe I. Well, let's read that. This attribute. If you don't set the property specific name of the property to be set with the generated checksum value, that's what we need. Let's do this. Oh, maybe let's do echo. Uh, so we are truly end. And then we're going to do the checksum. Or like that. Now let's try this. It might be long, <laughs> like that. Ah, there must be a way. Maybe. Let me let me see if I have a if I have this solution for this example. I should have. Uh, that one, migrating, migration, SRC demos. And test reuse, I think that's the one. Oh, it's like that. Just dollar checks in that. That's interesting. Let's just copy that stuff. Nice, oh, easy. That's the way to do the live demos. Just copy paste the solution. Checksum wasn't in uh, quotes. The checksum wasn't in quotes. Ah, got it. That's there you go. There you go. 
Hey, we have the checksum of the file. So if I run it again, it should be the same. If I edit the foo txt and do some stuff here and run it, it should be different. Yes, it's slightly different. Um, okay, so that's the end deep imports, which might help with migration. But uh, mm. I'd say usually it's not that useful when migrating from end. That's just the reality. Um, not that it makes it the, the migration harder or, or more e more, dif uh, more difficult or more lightweight. It's just um, mm. it's a nice feature, but I haven't seen it like a deeply used during migrating from end. Um, um, there's one interesting thing I want to show you of upgrading Gradle, and that's going to be the end of the session. So um, if I go to one of the, my last demos, uh, compare Gradle builds plugin. And let's go to Java Quick Start. So Java Quick Start is basically the um, the, the Quick Start the sample that I got from the zip distribution. Let's take a look at the build of Gradle. It's doing some stuff. Um, let's do Gradle. Actually, hang on. Let me just go back. Does it have a wrapper? So let's. Let's assume that this is using Gradle 1.5 and we want to try out migration to 1.6, okay? So I'm going to just add the wrapper task. Uh, task, wrapper, type, wrapper, Gradle version plus 1.5, then do Gradle wrapper. Then I can do things like Gradle W build, I guess. It's going to be built with Gradle 1.5, if all things. No, actually, let's just do Gradle W minus V to show you that it's using Gradle 1.5. OK, it's using 1.5. That's what we wanted. And we want to try out Gradle 1.6. Yes, yes, tests. And I think I don't remember how to do so, but this was apply, plugin, compare, Gradle builds, I think. Ah, I need to take a look at the documentation. Gradle, compare, Gradle builds. There you go. So, target build. Gradle version. This is for. Here we go. I'm gonna do. Com I need. I need to copy the task too. Compare Gradle builds target Gradle version 1.6. So we want to migrate from 1.5 to 1.6. Let's try it. Gradle W. Compare Gradle builds. Um, it's what's going to do is it's going to execute this build with Gradle with the existing Gradle version. Uh, it happens to be Gradle 1.5, and then it's going to execute the same build with Gradle version 1.6. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same because this is a very simple uh, build, so there's there's no problem. It's built successful, and there should be some reports. Reports. Index HTML. So comparison of the uh, so 1.5 against 1.6. All good. The archives are completely identical. So let's break it and let's prove that this is really working. But let me think how to break it. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna mess up with the manifest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make the manifest dynamic so that it's different in different Gradle inversions. So it's gonna do Gradle version for current. Say something like that. Now, now this compiling of the build should fail because the manifest file that gets uh, zipped up with other jar contents will be different depending on the build. The build outcomes were not found to be identical, as we can see here. Let's take a look at that. Ah, come on. Let me go there. And it shows us what's the difference. So the manifest is different. 
It doesn't say what, but it just says that this file is different. So this might be useful for you to compare the, like the, against the target version of Gradle, so it might streamline the upgrade process. Um, we'll see whether it's really useful for really large build with complicated output, whether it's going to actually be useful. There are so many things that the complicated build provides, like the test results, whether you know the test results are the same. You know, you mean that if there are test failures, so I expect in the newer build, the same failures, the same exactly the same test fail, etc. Uh, but generally, you can see that we are also investing to make it easy for you to upgrade Gradles. So as this feature grows and we have more features, I would expect that you can just automatically say. Uh, try out next Gradle version or try out Gradle nightly. It's building and then it's showing you, oh good, you can migrate. Yeah, and then you do it and then everyone sees, hey, build are failing, what have you done? And, but uh, maybe not, maybe it will be all good. And I guess you have might have questions about that feature. Yeah? yeah in the local, in the directory that you're running it, um, the local cache that's, that's stored in the directory, is that different for each of these versions? Yes. So there'll be two directories holding two versions of the cache, one for 1.5 and one for 1.6? Yes, but they have, they are all in the, in your local. You're talking about the dependency cache? What kind no, of I'm, cache? I'm talking about the, uh, the incremental build cache. Uh, yes, so let's take a look to, so incremental build cache is stored in the .gradle directory. Well, let's open it and let's see here. And as you can see, it has various versions. So, um, any other questions? So I mean, I'm so I think this room will host the IDE talk, right, Peter? Yes. Yeah. So I might join this talk later on and demo some of the large build stuff that I haven't finished during my morning talk. So I might uh, attempt to implement this dynamic uh, settings with Gradle stuff that basically allows allows me to import like a huge build, let's say 2,000 module builds into the ID in a way that uh, that I only see the like the relevant project that I'm working on. So uh, there's a good chance that I'm going to be demoing that at the end of the ID talk and there's some chance that I will succeed at that. Um, but yeah, feel free to join. Okay, and that, that'll be the it for this session and there's one more session to go, you can do it guys, and the, the end of the conference. Thank you very much.